Okay, here's my uh, Maker Gear M2 printer, and this one has uh, seen some better days. It's got some corrosion on this upper motor here, and um, that's mainly from a fan blowing on it with humid air in Hawaii for a long time. The motor down here, which doesn't have a fan blowing on it, is a lot less corrosion. But anyway, the Maker Gear design, um, I like a lot about it, and I think it is a mostly great design. Like, the idea of using linear rails for the X and Y is, of course, awesome. Um, I don't really like the two ball screws on the side. Or not ball screws, but linear ball, linear rods. Because they aren't supported in the middle, so they can flex more. And then you got this giant um, bed moving back and forth, which creates um, motion in that direction. And then this, this bed actually weighs 2 pounds 10 ounces. This is my aluminum... May, may weigh, I think it weighs about the same as their stock bed, but this is a mag hold bed that has magnets embedded in it. But this, and then the spider probably weighs, he probably weighs about three pounds, the moving gantry um, for that axis. And it actually came with a little stainless, originally, um, spider that takes the... I actually put... So what I've modified here is I put two ball bearings on this axis, first of all, to give more strength for this one, because it's got all the moving weight. For the this one, all it moves is the extruder, so one ball bearing is fine. These are um, M12, MR12 uh, bearings. They're the real made in Taiwan ones, so they're not the Chinese fake ones. Um, and what I've added also, as I've added a, in this case, an MR9, uh, the 9mm rail. Um, you could use a 12mm. This was a surplus one from eBay that was like $12. And it doesn't need to be super precision because the Z only goes, I mean, it's precision, but it's not going to get a ton of wear because the Z goes up and down very slowly. But what this does, I can push it up to and back feed the motor. It actually moves quite smoothly. It, um, so now when this thing is shaking back and forth, it transfers the load to the frame instead of just through these two points over here, it's transferring the load also on this side. So we're getting the whole, it, it, the whole frame is still gonna shake, but at least it's shaking this side with this one instead of creating like kind of a torsional vibration. What this allows you to do is basically double the speed that you're printing at without having horrible um, wobble artifacts in the print. Um, and what I've done here is I've just I've machined this plate in the middle there you can see and it's bolted on and then I got an angle piece it's bolted on here to this ball bearing. I have a, a large manual Bridgeport cone mill that I made this on but you can do it. I've done a simpler one um, over here on my other printer. This is the one I made first. And this one's just made from bent 8 inch scrap aluminum. It was painted white. Um, I bent it in a vise. I drilled these holes by drilling them through. I drilled one hole and then I screwed it and then I drilled that hole through the, from the top rail so it's already aligned. I don't even, didn't even mark it. And then I just drilled these from the top. So this is all done freehand. This is like the simple way, the hack, before I knew that it would work. And this is a Chinese clone um, MR12 bearing that I bought for, I think, $20 on eBay. And then it's only got two screws and I got some little spacers. I don't know if you can see that. There's a, yeah, a little washer there, just because my alignment wasn't perfect in that dimension. And I to align it to the stainless here, I basically this thing is flush with the frame. I had to drill these holes, which is hard in stainless, um, but it is possible. Again, I think I drilled the top one and then drilled the bottom one, and then um, drill, drilled all the west rest through the rail. I think I covered this all in tape to prevent like little shavings from getting everywhere. I covered it in painter's tape the sides. So then you can clean it off and blow it out. But needless to say, you would you got to be careful not to get stainless shavings everywhere. And it, it's pretty hard to drill stainless, so that takes some time. And then I had to, I also put two linear ball bearings in the top here. And this is again with that recycled eighth inch aluminum. So I did this free. I did this with a jigsaw, like hand, simple hand tools, a jigsaw, and a hand drill. So anyone could do this mod for about you know thirty dollars. Well, if you if you buy this with a rail, another ball bearing there, the real one, that's the twenty dollar bearing. So. Only a $40, $50 mod. But anyway, it gives you super rigidity in that axis. Um, and I haven't actually got this. I just wanted to, to make this video before I put it together so you can see how this thing goes together. And this time I made it all out of a quarter inch plate, so it's much stronger here. I don't know if that's a good... I mean, I don't think... You really only want... You know, you got this, this wide plate here, so you don't need... Tons of up and down strength. You only need the the twisting side to side, which the thin eighth inch can accomplish in a large profile like this. So you don't need this quarter inch. 
This is more from the front of the printer, how most people would see it. I've also got a couple other mods. This is a, a screw tightening mod. So it allows you to simply let me get that thing to focus. Turn this screw down here, and it keeps constant tension on the um, screw, so you don't ever have to tighten. In this, in the standard Maker Gear method, you have to lock down a nut here. So you screw that up, and then you have to lock down a nut. And it's really hard to lock a nut and then not have this screw go up and down a tiny bit different amount. So in this case, um, it locks. It's always locked basically because that that spring is pushing against this retained nut, and this nut is prevented from spinning by this 3D printed piece. It's on Thingiverse's design on the EasyBotix uh, Thingiverse thing if you search for it. But anyway, you want it up about there. I'm still working on this so it's not calibrated right now. And then up here is another simple 3D printed bracket that just clamps onto the the linear rail. And I just printed this and this is a um, optical interrupter. You can buy them on eBay for a few dollars and you can wire that into the circuitry. I think you might have to invert the make the Marlin firmware end stop setting, but that's not too hard. And then you get optical end stop. It's so important for the Z. The other ones don't matter because they're just to set the set the endpoints. You know, the, the X and Y can stay. Um, let me get that to focus. Stay stay here. These stock you know little switch. That doesn't matter. The repeatability in your Z height is what is so critical in 3D printing. You know, you need your bed level so that the print head is within. I don't know, a tenth of a millimeter or less, probably a twentieth or something, I don't know. I like my prints to be perfectly stuck without any... I don't like to clean up any um, material on the bottom of them, so I want them rigidly mounted to the bed. What other mods? Oh yeah, this is also uh, um, just a filament drive mod so that your filament comes starts right in the middle of the roll, it's less likely to get tangled. And I like to use this six millimeter OD real um, Teflon tubing from McMaster Car. It's, not, it's only a few dollars a foot, and so the, I modified this design. This was someone else's that then fits in here. And this is all custom extruder. Oh, it's got a E3D, the real E3D extruder on here. This thing modifies it to uh, be a little wider so that it can fit this large. Because the default, this, this is someone else's 3D printed um, extruder mount design here that I'm really happy with. I've been using this for two or three years now and the things are work great. Printed in PETG, it'll just last forever. Put a great, put a really good fan on this to keep it cool. And then you also want a fan, um, which isn't mounted here, but I made, I designed this little simple bracket that screws in, I think an 80 millimeter fan. Of course, it because the humidity was too high in this printer, my other printer that's been in an air conditioned room is perfectly fine, but this printer was in the humidity, so. Yeah, you want a fan blowing on the motor because motor, the motor, it, it, the motor itself will be fine under the standard printing temperatures, but what you don't want to soften is your all your 3D printed um, brackets so and the extruder mount. So keeping the motor down to a really low temperature helps keep this thing super rigid. It's not for the motor's protection, it's for the printed plastic extruder mount that we have this cooling fan on the motor that is critical. Um, at least, I mean, it, it'll work without it. I ran it without it, but it, this thing tends to soften over time. It's just less likely to give you a very rigid extruder. Um, and then this is a simple 3D printed uh, plastic mount. I think it's on Thingiverse 2. Um, this one I use here. Actually, this is a design I made. I, I don't know if I ever put this on Thingiverse, but um, this design is just a simple block that screws onto the existing holes and it uses a it's an 8mm rod. You can see here. And this is just a spacer, you can widen it out. This allows you to use the really narrow, um, like this style spools from uh, Talman 3D, you know, like if you're using their, their small nylon. Because that will actually fit on 